you guys, look who's at our shop. It's David Newburn, and he cruised here yesterday evening in the big, huge, red enclosed ramp truck that belongs to Finnegan that is known as Lincoln Hawk. Mm -hmm. So he's on his way to Arizona, and he texted and was like, hey guys, can I stop and do some maintenance on the truck? And we were like, heck yes. So we had a fun evening yesterday, went to dinner, went to a local place and played some cornhole and hung out, had a buddy, Matt, Imperial Beach Dad, stop over for the night too. So we've had some good hangout time, and now it's time to get to work. Um, not only are we going to change the oil, but we're going to do the fuel filters. And over dinner last night, Newburn was like, by the way, the brakes on that truck are super sketchy and I feel like I might die. And, and Aaron real. said. Yeah, hey, if you don't know it, it's got slack adjusters. So we just take that slack out and. I had no idea that was a thing. Again. That's great. <laughs> Please, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're adding that to the list. Um, the guys are going to get busy. I'm probably just going to film and be rather useless, but. Um, Except for the fact that I'll be documenting it for y'all and hopefully you enjoy that, so. Only the best. <sighs> Let's mm -hmm. get to work. What I'm looking at is that bucket does not have much oil in it. It's up to like right here. Okay, that's a big bucket. So, so it's probably Fair amount. I'd say it's probably 10 to 12 quarts in there, if, okay. if not I don't, if not more. I don't, it's hard to judge. I checked the oil yesterday and it was still full. So We'll try and keep this contained as much as we can. How many miles do you have on that oil? <laughs> well, I added like six quarts to it before I left my house. <laughs> so however many miles it is from my house to here. Well, you, you should probably only have to change it like eight to 10,000, I guess. Come on down. Now, once it gets oily, if you can take it off without dropping it. Is that a challenge? I'll be pretty impressed. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's a pretty big, heavy filter. Yeah, it is. Holds a damn gallon by itself. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're saying we should change the oil, put oil back in it, fire it up, get oil pressure, and then do the fuel filter. Yeah, that's my feeling because what we want to do is run the RPM up on the fuel filter you know, so it doesn't suck air into it. Gotcha. And I would rather have oil pressure. All right. Makes sense to me, at least. Sounds good to me. Whatever you say, I recommend is good. Because if we mess it up, you know it's going to be you and I replacing this engine, and I really don't care to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be putting a Duramax in here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about these 3208s? What's your experience with them? It's a good engine. They're underpowered. Anything in a truck this big, they kind of got away from eight cylinders, V8s, anything V, honestly. And they went straight sixes because that straight line torque is a lot better <laughs> but it's for what you guys are doing it's totally fine it's good it's a great engine it runs about 65 70 miles an hour at like 2800 rpm yeah so it's, it's screaming going down the expressway yeah i mean that's a lot for any diesel but yeah is it due to mostly gearing in the trans or is that typical yeah yeah it's a it's probably a, a straight drive transmission i would not expect it to be overdrive I think that torques to about 200 feet down. Got it. Just torque it till it gets loose again. Yeah, Got it. <laughs> this filters 20 pounds. <laughs> Jeez. This joker's in the way. Okay. Oh, oh, come back. Oh, God. <laughs> that was a close call. Now how tight do you normally get these, Aaron? I do them hand tight with a fixed rail typically. Was that hand tight with a clean hand or an oily hand? <laughs> okay, I got it. Done. Okay. Okay. It's so clean you can barely see it, but it's right there. Perfect. Took exactly four gallons. The filters are full, four gallons of oil. He didn't suck on it, he just... Yep, you just need that. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
You're getting tired. The <laughs> bitch. You usually come put your mouth on it. <laughs> she got a hundred pounds of oil pressure. That's probably not accurate, but whatever. Think it's good? Yeah, we're good. This is clean, I promise. It's totally counterintuitive, but I was just telling David, crank it up and hold it all the way down because that filter, you know, we took it off, there's gonna be air in the system. And the engine might stumble a little bit and then pick back up. It might die on us and we have to re-bleed it. But, okay. but I think if you just hold it down until it totally clears up, you'll be fine. All right, let's give it a shot. clear by now. It could just be air too. It could be air in one of the injectors or something. Check that back one again. Yeah. So, I don't know. 
It's kind of going away now. So. Yeah, it's getting better. It may have just had a little air or something in it. Could be uh, good now. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, hard air in it. Cool. Alrighty, oil change is done. Fuel filters are done. We had a injector that was sounding kind of weird. At least that's what Aaron diagnosed that ticking as. Um, as it came off of idle, any kind of rev that would go away. So he said it sounds like a weak injector. Um, diagnosed that, but it doesn't seem like a deal breaker. Moving on to brakes. So that one's definitely out of adjustment. So we'll check the rest. A little bit stuck, but you can see that I'm pushing in on it. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing, you're going to tighten this until you feel it start to drag. And you hear it too. Fast it. That's the brakes engaging. I'm just trying to feel when it starts to drag, and both the fronts were at a half turnout. Okay. So we tighten them a, a quarter turn. That's all there is to it. That, that, that it's that simple. This doesn't move at all. That'll just stay in, in its adjustment right there. Yeah, it's locked. As soon as that button comes out. Oh, you're pushing that. You're pushing that button in. Yeah, I'm pushing it in to move the to move yep. the bolt, and then when you get it to a certain spot, it just locks it mm -hmm. back in place. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Real simple. Wow. I thought it was something right here. I didn't know it was right there. You can adjust there, but you'd only do that if you run out of adjustment here, which means you probably need to choose. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't think you need it. Look at the size of that versus his head. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks so small to me. It's a medium sized truck. No way. Yeah. The ones I work on are a lot bigger. Compare that to like a nine inch. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Totally yeah. different game. All right, school me on the the tires. I know people say when you're when you're adding air to these tires, it's very dangerous. Yes, it's 110 psi, and when they pop, they do a lot of damage. I had two blow up on me, which is why I'm partially deaf. <laughs> Holy crap! I'm not trying to scare you. No, no, I, I just I've always heard, and so I've always been paranoid about it. Yeah, the, so the biggest concern was the older two-piece wheels, mm -hmm. where it's got you know a mm -hmm. rim in the middle and then a ring on the outside, but still, I mean, with drive rod tires, man, when they pop, it is a massive explosion and not fun to be around. It's a really heavy flat tire, so for them, the pop is unusual. You, you got to keep in mind, when I had problems with them, it was trucks that have been sitting 15, oh. 20 years. These slack adjusters to adjust the rear brakes are kind of dirty, and they've got a, a button that pushes in. When it pushes in, you can turn and take the slack out of it, and then it's supposed to come out on its own. These were so dirty, I was concerned if I pushed them in, they were going to stick in. So I'm just cleaning them up. They are a little bit gunked up. I'm using a little bit of brake clean on them. And brush them, and we should be good to go. Last thing you want is your brakes undoing all the work you did, because the button won't go back in. That'll work. Hey, David, one more thing. You see this right here? Yep. Chamber bolt. So, there's a plug right here. Yep. You take that out, push it in there, you'll, you'll kind of find where it goes, and do a quarter turn, and you can tighten that with three quarter inch, and it'll release these brakes. So if you're ever stuck, like if it does lock down in the middle of the road or something, put those camera bolts in there, and it'll release the brakes and you can drag it off the road. Oh, so just take that bolt out yep. and then thread it into the back side of that. Too, yeah. Thread it in until it releases, basically. Yep. Yeah, it, you'll feel it when it goes in the groove. Do a quarter turn and then tighten it and it'll release them. Wow. Yeah, you know, if your engine dies or something and you run out of air pressure, that's a way to get them on camera. Yeah. If you start rolling, I'm just gonna hang on to the frame and drag with it. <laughs> <laughs> go on a ride. <laughs> Oh, dude, these are way out of adjustment. <laughs> okay, I'd leave it there. Neighbor and I are getting ready to go for a spin. It's gonna be something else. <laughs> An airplane on wheels. It looks like a freaking airplane. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Our trailer used to have built-in seating, and uh, it works. It's quite comfy. Have a seat. It's really funny to get into. It's a, it's a giggle machine. <laughs> he's looking through his sunglasses. He's like, "What is this janky?" <laughs> I have long legs. And yeah. I have to scoot forward to get the clutch <laughs> all the way engaged. So Newbert's legs are like, 
The clutch is a little bit tough. <laughs> I've done it like this. The clutch is tough. It needs to be adjusted. The gas pedal's way high. It's just like, it's, weird. it's really, really awkward in the morning. No, I don't know where first is. But you'll reverse. still like what? it. What is this? Okay. No. First is up there, but reverse is over and down. To the left. And it actually is kind of hard to find reverse. Yeah. I'm still trying to find the clutch pedal. Hold on. The clutch pedal's down there somewhere. Let's use this. This is going to be great. You want me to do it? I'm this thing. I mean, it's Is really, it neutral? It's right. really great. Am I pushing the gas or what? That was a short drive. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we got to the edge of the driveway and the car died and it seems to be a fuel delivery oh, problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a neighbor. He's awesome. <laughs> drive one the um, Let's go drive him. Yeah, he's really great. Um, so I guess you're gonna have to drive it next time you're in town. Next week? Yeah. All right, let's see if he can break the Bronco. <laughs> Round two. Here we go. <laughs> go straight. Okay. The steering's really sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> Drives like a lifted old truck. And That's like right. It. That's right. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Rides like my big red truck right there. <laughs> <laughs> it went great. We just did, went around the block. He likes her. I love it. He says that she's fun to drive in. I, need, I agree. I need something with no top and no doors to cruise around in. It does make you want to have something like this. So good. Now you gotta get on the road. I know. Dang it. Only got 17 hours left. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it'll be back in a week or so. More shenanigans will ensue. I have faith that my brakes are gonna work much better now though. <laughs> I think so too. All right, I guess our work here is done and it's time yeah. for Newburn to roll out. I'm sad. Crank up Lincoln Hawk and drive off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. We look forward to seeing you next time, dude. A week from now? Yeah. Wait for now.